Thank you so much for uh, watching today. I am with Malia Stevens. She's one of the board members for the National Center on Sexual Exploitation, also referred to as NICOSI, but it's a wonderful national organization that really helps fight the porn industry, sex trafficking, exploitation, and we've had an update already during quarantine with her, but there have been some really good things that have happened with Nicosi and some big victories. And so I asked her to be with us today to give us a rundown. Now, Malia, you guys have this really great thing called the Dirty Dozen. What mm -hmm. is that? Well, every year we announce the Dirty Dozen list, which is the 12, the top 12 uh, uh, promoters of sexual exploitation, corporate promoters. And uh, it's actually been a very successful campaign since its initial launch. We've had major changes, policy changes with big companies such as Walmart, Google, um, and uh, an airline company. Yeah, all the major airline companies, all the major hotel companies. There's um, we've they've once they have enough public outcry uh, and they have enough awareness about the issues that they're accidentally or intentionally supporting, uh, they make some sweeping policy changes. And it's it's incredible to see that happen. Well, I know just recently you guys had three new wins having to do with Google search, TikTok and Netflix. Mm -hmm. Was that because of the pressure from the Dirty Dozen list? Yeah, so many parents and advocates and um, activists got online and wrote peti signed petitions uh, asking them to increase safety features and to make it easier for parents to intervene because these, unfortunately, like TikTok is known as a, you know, a hunting territory for predators. And um, so it's just very difficult for parents to keep abreast of all this. So thankfully, these companies are starting to respond. And I'd love for people to go to our website and see more, read more of the details of the new features. I mean, there's still more work to be done, but it's, it's definitely a huge improvement. Yeah, I've read that there's still um, plenty of security controls that need to, to be adjusted and it's still not perfect, but I am glad that they're moving in the right direction. Yes. Below Malia's name, you will see the website in sexualexploitation.com, right? .org, sorry, mm -hmm. that where you can find all of this great information. Mm -hmm. So Malia, with these great wins from the Dirty Dozen list, you have even more good news about something that is horrible, and that is Pornhub <laughs> and Trafficking Hub, which I was not familiar with Trafficking Hub, and I know you're going to tell us about that. But let me just let people know Pornhub is one of the platforms, the biggest platform where porn is uploaded to. Now, this is basically just one platform. Okay, there are many out there. But if you started watching right now, all the content that was put on Pornhub, and you started right now, and you watch 24-7, it would take you 68 years to watch just what's been up uploaded as of now. Every right. nine minutes, an entire day's worth of content is uploaded to Pornhub. Yes. And over 42 billion annual visits a year on Pornhub. This is huge. This is a family killer. This is a personal uh, person killer, you could say. Um, it's full of violent criminal behavior. And it's something that we don't talk about. And so I'm so glad that you're here to tell yeah. us what is happening in this area. And is the movement, uh, is is there finally people starting to recognize what's happening here? Yes, thankfully so. We've Those of us who've been activists with this have known for a long time that the pornography industry is very dark, sinister, uh, that it's it's completely one with the traffic, trafficking industry in most cases. There's... Um, it's it very much overlaps with other forms of sexual exploitation. We've known that women and children who are sexually abused and raped and tortured, that their mm -hmm. images are uploaded to these porn sites and made to look like they're, they're doing this consensually when clearly they're not. And um, even Pornhub, I read a statistic that said they had um, uh, thousands of, of their own users comment in 2019 that they were concerned about some of the images that were uploaded that it looked like uh, there was abuse and torture and things of that nature. But but this industry doesn't care. They don't pay attention to that. They uh, they just want to commodify and monetize the sexual abuse, rape and torture of of people. And um, they try to normalize it. They they try to make it look like this is something that's 
legitimate form of entertainment. Everybody does it. But our research, uh, you know, years of empirical research have shown us that this is not a, a form of entertainment and it's definitely not harmless. It's very negatively affecting the brain, relationships and society at large. So yeah. they're starting to understand that and they're coming out with new language such as pro-feminine porn or um, like equality. They use different terms to try to mask it. But but when you really peel back the veneer, you see the, the destruction that's there. And so, as you said, Pornhub is the number one uh, platform um, and it has a, a, many, many affiliated platforms that it, that are owned by the same group, which is MindGeek. Okay. okay. Now, is porn legal? Because some people will hear this and they'll say, hey, this is just a moral issue. If people want to do that, they can do that. It, it's fine. It's legal. Um, mm -hmm. Is porn that you would see on the internet or even on Netflix, you know, softcore, what they might call is not really softcore anymore. Mm -hmm. Is this legal? No, it's not legal. Uh, actually, uh, softcore pornography is considered legal, but that's a very confined definition of what that is. And the mainstream pornography that you see on the internet is hardcore, um, very violent, degrading um, material. Which is the, main, which is the main mainstream. Mainstream. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. And uh, the, the typical pornography you see now is child incest themed, rape themed uh, material. And this is why we have such an escalation in child sexual abuse images, otherwise known as child pornography, because mainstream adult pornography is very child themed. It creates mm -hmm. an appetite for that. This is why you have so much um, activity with sexual predators. We're creating a an, an society full of uh, pedophiles because we it really does form the brain in a such a way and the appetite in such a way that they crave this more violent degrading um, deviant form of um, imagery and activity Malia so, I, heard, I heard you talk one time about people that are really into porn they have a hard time being compassionate or they have no problem with hurting other people what is the science behind that well, yes, the way that the pornography, the, the images, the way it affects our brain, it hits the pleasure pathway of the brain, um, and especially the internet pornography of today, it floods the brain with dopamine. Um, we, we have a dopamine response, I should say, and it hits that pleasure pathway. And to get the same dopamine hit, people need more deviant, more violent material. And so they start to to want it, even if the part of them says, this is disgusting, I don't like this, there's this right. physiological response happening and it creates this obsessive compulsive cycle. But as they continue down that pathway, it atrophies the brain. Uh, it's it, it can cause the brain to actually shrink. And they've done so many, over 40 neurological studies that demonstrate this. And when the brain atrophies, the frontal lobe, uh, the as part of the brain that has compassion, altruism, um, oftentimes the brain will shrink back past that point. So they don't feel uh, the compassion for others. They start to see people as objects to be used. But what's interesting when, when men uh, go through recovery and particularly typically it can be women and men, but I've seen this, the testimonies of several men who go through recovery after being an abusive, like an, a sexually abusive person, if they weren't at their core, an extreme narcissist or abuser, they, they come through recovery and their brain starts to fill back out and they they can see what what happened to them and they feel so much remorse over the fact that they became that way as a result of pornography. And that just blows my mind that mm -hmm. your brain actually changes. There's mm -hmm. a physical thing that happens when you watch this. The and brain it's highly changes. addictive that, mm -hmm. wow, it can just really... Messable well, not life. only that, it, it affects the, you know, the mood, depression, anxiety, self-esteem. And we have the new phenomenon of porn induced erectile dysfunction that I think we talked a little bit about last time. That's a really big problem for young men right now. So you sent me some slides of a talk that you heard the other day about um, someone actually was found on Pornhub, like they were missing for a while. What's that story? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a young girl that was missing for over a year and her family had been searching for her. Someone found images, uh, sexual abuse images of her that had been uploaded to porn, Pornhub. That's how they found her. They found her perpetrator. There's also another case of a 15 year old young girl who had been raped and 
tortured. It had been filmed and it was uploaded to Pornhub. She begged them repeatedly to take it down. They ignored her pleas for help and until she posed as her own attorney. Um, and, and finally, they took it down after that. This was a, a big BBC story recently. Um, there's been over 100 um, cases from a, a site called Girls Do Porn that's owned by Pornhub where they are suing the uh, company for because they were trafficked or um, coerced yeah. and abused. There's numerous cases like this that uh, we hear about oftentimes regularly. And having worked with survivors of traffic, you know, trafficking survivors, knowing that they were forced to create pornography sometimes and pretend like they like it. And this is what people think is um, normal material. Right. So Pornhub is complicit with all this and they um, they know it and they pretend like they have verification systems and they don't. Anyone can um, can upload material. You don't have to have a government issued ID. And they come after children. Their marketing, if you pay attention to their marketing, it's very disturbing because they they target children through Disney uh, characters, through Star Wars characters, and um, and just the way that they are out in the mainstream now, because they want to get people hooked as early as they can for for power and money. So we're really excited about this traffickinghub.com uh, website and the petition yeah. that's been signed by hundreds of thousands of people to tackle this issue. So trafficking hub, um, we had a little edit. And so tell us again, what is, so porn hub is the bad one. Yes. What is trafficking hub? Trafficking hub is the website created by uh, Lila Micklewaite with Exodus Cry. She's the abolition coordinator for Exodus Cry, which is a, uh, an, an ally of, of ours. And they do phenomenal work in raising awareness about the issues with uh, sexual exploitation. But she has really spearheaded this effort to wake people up to the, the crime and the abuse with Pornhub. And so Trafficking Hub is letting everyone know that it's, that porn, Pornhub is, is not independent of trafficking and, and criminal behavior. It's, it's really Trafficking Hub. Like this right. fuels the demand for trafficked women and children and they profit from trafficked women and children. Okay, so what do people do? How can people get involved and, and help fight this problem? One of the one of the things they can do is go to traffickinghub.com and sign the petition and share the information, raise awareness, uh, and help us also raise awareness about the fact that pornography, it, hardcore internet pornography, mainstream pornography is illegal material because people need to understand that and have the myths and the misunderstandings um, cleared up but those would be some major points as well as just getting familiar with the research on our website um, they can inform their friends and family because that's this is what we need to have spread around is the fact that this is a poison to our relationships to individuals and to our health uh, not just as individuals but as a society and uh, uh, the more awareness we can raise the better chance we have of conquering this together because if we get rid of the demand for trafficked women and children, we solve the problem of, of sex trafficking. If people stop buying it, then There's we no are going to have this anymore. Exactly. And what causes people to want to buy it? Oftentimes, the majority of the time is uh, pornography addiction and sex addiction fueled by pornography. Okay. So there is another call to action that people not only signing the petition at traffickinghub.com. If y'all don't find it at .com, then try .org. I, I, I'm not sure I put it up there as .com, but it, it may actually be .org. Um, you, I think Nicosi National Center on Sexual Exploitation, don't you all have a petition targeting credit card companies? What is that all about? Yes, uh, we're, we're with our dirty dozen list, you know, we've, we've highlighted Visa before, but right now we're, we're doing an international um, push through our new center that's been launched, International Center on Sexual Exploitation, which I can speak more about in a second, but we have a really a global push, uh, letters from I think 23 countries uh, asking major credit card companies to no longer affiliate with the sexual abuse and sexual exploitation of the pornography industry because they're processing payments for Pornhub and other related sites. And we want them to realize that they're facilitating trafficking and sexual abuse by doing so. 
Well, good. I will put those that link in the Trafficking Hub link in the description below. So when people are finished watching, they can go ahead and sign up there. All right. Lastly, right. tell us about the new center in Great Britain, I believe it is, right? Yes. Uh, a good friend and the v one of our VPs is in Cambridge, um, England now, and she's leading up the International Center for us again. International Center on Sexual Exploitation. We're super excited about it because, you know, pornography is a global issue. Sex trafficking is a global issue. And truly, we have been a global movement for several years now, but it's wonderful to have a central office so that we can really harness the energy and, and target things from um, a center in Europe and with our allies there. And it's, it's exciting how much momentum we've already got moving um, just in the last couple of weeks. So that'll be a fun thing to follow and, and see what we're able to accomplish. That's that center. very great mm -hmm. news. Well, thank you so much for being with me. Is there anything else you want to let people know as we close out? Well, I, I think just continue to be aware and especially if they have children or um, loved ones that are quarantined right now, just to continue to op have open conversations and, and take extra measures of safety. Um, and as we talked about last time, we have some great resources for that on our website just to protect kids and um, as they continue into the summer. But I, I think that's it. That's great. I do remember seeing some great conversation starters, I believe, on your website. So I'll be sure to link those in the description, too. And great. thank you so much for being with us today. I appreciate all your hard work. And the National Center on Sexual Exploitation is doing a fantastic job. And we're so happy that we've been able to work with you on several projects together. So you have a great rest of the summer. And hopefully we'll be out of quarantine soon and we can all meet in person again. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Becky, for all you do and for Eagle Form and all that they stand for. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Bye-bye.